Hello again, I am Blunty. This is an arcade stick, obviously, and also obviously it's from Razer because it's got a great big Razer logo on there. That doesn't have to be there, we'll get to that though. This is the Atrox, which is a weird name, but basically it's a arcade stick or a fight stick, if you like, for the Xbox One. And it is fairly sweet, actually. It is significant. It is really sort of weighty and heavy, so it's not going to move about on you when it's on the desk or anything. It's got a little wrap rubber pad on the bottom there to make sure it stays where it's put. Um, also quite comfortable on your knees as I found out because that's how I generally tend to use it because my little TV table <laughs> in front of my couch isn't sturdy enough to really uh, go to town on something like this. So it's at some knees and that's fine. But I've also tried it on the desk and as I said, really, really nice. The uh, stick and the buttons are uh, both Sanwa made and if you're into arcade uh, uh, cabinets or construction or buttons or fight sticks or controls in general, you know that name Sanwa. It is quality. It is the stuff they use in proper, you know, real arcade cabinets and everything. And way back in the day when I built my own arcade cabinet, I in fact chose Sanwa buttons and sticks because they are known to be extremely good, extremely reliable and very, very robust. So thumbs up for that. There's a little switch up here, uh, which you can flick over to lock so you can't accidentally press the Xbox One button or the menu buttons, which are around the side here. Uh, so if you get sort of really aggressive or it's sitting on your lap and you bump those, it's not going to ruin your game or anything like that, which is a nice little addition. And as you can see here, it's got the ball top on it, uh, but there is another option for that, like I said about the top as well. This whole top panel can come off and you can put your own artwork in there. That's what I was getting at before. But say you don't like the ball top, you prefer the bat top. Well... Hit that button, the whole thing swings open. It's on a little gas lift strut right here, which is kind of awesome. They give you a, a bat top to screw in its place. So you've got both options depending on your tastes, which is really nice of them. They even give you a little uh, screwdriver here with which to make modifications to your device. There's another uh, uh, little cabinet over here which contains the cable, and we'll get back to that momentarily. Inside of the body here, this little honeycomb pattern, that is all screw mount points, so you can modify this however you like. All of the buttons and switches and cables are all spade connector. You can pull them off, you can rewire the thing. You've got a little cheat sheet wiring chart up the top there to let you know which colors go to which switch. You can rewrite any way you like, even if the game itself doesn't allow you to reassign buttons. I mean, most do, but still, some people like to rewire their uh, their controls so it's wired how they like without having to go into the options menu especially good if you're going you know around tournaments and stuff you don't have to go into the menu system and set up your controls the way you like them every single time and because these are all standard sanwa buttons and sticks and everything you can pull them out you can replace them you can switch them around do over what you want to uh to to your liking and uh, if you can pop this little thing off here there we go corner to corner side to side uh, you can get at the stick you can pull this entire uh, assembly off. You can sort of fix this up and rewire it and swap out the switches if you like. These are micro switches. I tend to prefer leaf switches in my uh, joysticks uh, and that's what I chose when I built my own cabinet but if I wanted that I could simply switch this out couldn't I and um, that's the whole point of these things being uh, very very customizable and very repairable it is kind of fantastic so we'll snap that thing right back on there and of course you've got this extra storage space in here to carry your bits and bolts and pieces whatever you need around with it now let's get to that cable we'll push this aside for just a moment this cable is uh, four meters long I think let me just double check that it's on the box here somewhere where is it? Where is it? Yeah, four meters long, uh, which is nice and long, long enough to go across most people's living rooms, uh, long enough to get you out of trouble. And if I can unfurl the thing here. So on the back here, we've got a uh, little DIN style connector that goes into the back and actually got a metal collar on it. So that screws in to keep it really, really nice and secure. It's never going to accidentally come loose from the back of the unit. Uh, and on the other end, the end that goes into your Xbox One, you've got a little sort of knobby thing here. And that is actually... A quick release so if someone uh, trips ass over tit over the cable that's running across your lounge room floor you're not going to have this thing be pulled off the table I mean this is really really heavy anyway so it's unlikely to be pulled off the table but it's not going to damage the cable when that happens and it's not going to be um, you know yoinking your Xbox out of your TV cabinet and possibly crashing it across the floor although it itself is quite heavy and significant too so it's kind of fair amount of inertia to it but the point is it's got a quick release cable there so to protect your equipment and your sanity and the people tripping over it <laughs> from from damaging either it or themselves or your uh, or your uh, Xbox One, so that is thoughtful design and I really like that. So 
that's all the hardware and stuff taken care of. How does it play? Well, we've only got a uh, really killer instinct on the Xbox One at the moment that is uh, sort of an ideal choice to play uh, uh, an arcade stick on, and I'm not really good at that game. But the point is, how robust is it? How well does it play? Is it responsive? And all that kind of stuff. And I can report, yes, it is. It's highly responsive. It feels exactly like an arcade stick should feel. I mean, of course it does. It's made with real arcade parts. Um, but the point is, you know, I, I went to town on this thing. I was you know, exaggerating here in this footage you see now, just playing up the camera and giving it a gold bash and thump, and it survived everything I threw at it. And, you know, I, I wailed on this thing because it's, you know, it's not mine. I didn't pay for it, and I have to send it back to Razor when I'm done so I could afford to, uh, you know, really go nuts on the thing, and I was unable to uh, damage it or phase it uh, in the least, actually. So, long story short, the Xbox One, Razor, Atrox... Uh, fight stick, arcade stick, controller, whatever you want to call it, comes highly recommended by me. It is a fantastic example of the breed, built to be extremely tough, robust. It's going to survive on the road. It's going to survive, uh, you know, people taking it around to tournaments and stuff. And it's going to survive uh, your younger brother or sister wailing on the damn thing because they don't know how to respect your gear. <laughs> that is it. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.